Hey, what's going on everyone? Gareth here, FCP Euro. Welcome back to another video. Uh, we're gonna be doing a diagnostic video on this 2001 BMW E39 M5. The complaint is the brake pedal is sometimes intermittently soft. Uh, so we're gonna take you through a step-by-step -step diagnostic process on what to look for, how to inspect your braking system, and how to find a possible source of that problem. So kind of as a proof of concept here, if I pump the brake pedal a bunch of times, it's firm right to about that point. If I just do one solid firm push as if like, you know, you were stopping on the road, like the pedal just keeps going. Like that is a, that is a very long pedal travel. And it's, it has very little resistance. Like it, it feels normal here and then it just, it just keeps going. Like that is not what I would expect it to feel like. And I've driven E39s before. Um, it doesn't feel bad, but I can definitely understand why somebody driving this car, if they're on the brakes heavy, might be concerned by that because it just doesn't feel solid where you would expect it to be. And this is part of the diagnosis where it's a little up to your interpretation, but um, that just doesn't feel 100% right. It's not what I would expect from a BMW brake pedal. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is look for any fault codes in the braking system. More specifically, the ABS hydraulic unit. A failing ABS unit can certainly create a brake pedal issue. For example, if it activates when it's not supposed to, there's a whole various amount of things that could be going on. So just as a, a quick sanity check, I'm going to go ahead and pull some fault codes off the ABS unit. In the case of this Ethernet M5, it's a Bosch 5.7 unit, which is fairly failure prone. Um, so I won't be surprised to see some fault codes on that, uh, but let's just go ahead and see what we have. Okay, so we have two fault codes stored uh, on the ABS control unit, and they both appear to be wheel speed related. Uh, everything's in German, um, but it does appear to be two of the same style fault codes. Uh, one is for the steering angle sensor requiring a adjustment or recalibration. Uh, 37 errors for that. And then there's 101 errors for the brake pedal switch. I don't think any one of those could cause a intermittent soft pedal. It's possible if somehow the ABS didn't know what was going on, triggered and then activated, but these fault codes are pretty standard on Bosch 5.7 modules, usually a communication related issue. Uh, particularly since they're located uh, really, really close to the source of heat, which would be the exhaust manifolds on the right side of the engine. Not great placement on these cars, which typically causes that problem anyway. Uh, so those are generally repaired quite frequently because of that issue. I don't think either one of, the, either one of these fault codes is a problem. Uh, so I'm not going to pay too close attention here, but starting with the ABS unit to see if there is an issue there is not a bad place to start if the car's equipped with ABS. Uh, so from there, I'm going to go ahead and get the car in the lift, and then we're going to start looking at our brake line connections to see if we could see anything there. Even the most minuscule amount of brake fluid leaking out could cause a soft brake pedal. Um, so this vehicle clearly has some aftermarket lines installed, which in itself is not inherently a problem, uh, but they do appear to be recently installed, so there's the possibility for um, one of these connections to be loose. So I'm looking at the connection of the brake caliper first, all four corners. And um, at least on this corner, it appears to be dry at the caliper. So we're going to go a little bit further up. We're going to look at the connection to the hard line on the body. And we're going to see if there's any signs of brake fluid leak there as well. And again, we're going to do this for all six of the soft lines on this car because they've all been replaced and upgraded with an aftermarket line. So we just want to make sure that there's no signs of fluid leak coming from those locations. So here at the body of the car, we have this mounting tab where the hard line comes up. And then that's where the soft line connects. Again, looking for any signs of fluid leak. Uh, it's dry, so no problem here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing at all four corners and just make sure that that's not happening. And then at least on this car, there's two soft lines um, that connect the hard lines that go to the rear of the car to hard lines that come out of the hydraulic unit. I also wanna check there as well. Um, again, just looking to make sure there's no notable leaks at any of those locations. So as you can see, there's no signs of any kind of brake fluid leak at the hard line connection to the soft lines or the connection to the brake calipers themselves. The bleeder screws are dry. There's no visible signs of leaking coming from the brake calipers. So no visible leak 
And, and again, if the seal, if the system's not sealed, that's going to definitely cause a soft brake pedal. But the way that this feels where it doesn't feel like there's an actual solid stopping point and it feels like you can just keep pressing the pedal with some resistance, I wouldn't expect that to be a brake line issue or major leak because that kind of leak where brake fluid is physically leaving the system, the brake pedal would have almost uh, no force feedback whatsoever. Uh, but just for sanity check, I'm going to go ahead and lower the car, go to the engine bay. There's two more soft lines we're going to check at the ABS hydraulic unit. And then uh, from there, we're going to move on to some other possible sources of problems on this. So we're also doing a similar situation up here at the uh, ABS hydraulic unit. This car has two flex lines that go to the rear hard lines. These were also replaced, so we're just making sure that uh, those look good as well, which they do. There's no kind of uh, leakage that's happening there. Uh, you could also, during this test, if you're looking for leaks, uh, hook up a power bleeder to the master cylinder reservoir with brake fluid in it, of course, uh, 10 PSI of pressure roughly. Uh, if anything were leaking in the system, you would be able to see it almost immediately. So that's a really good way to also check for leaks. Uh, but seeing as this car was driven in here, it's been driven for a while, if any brake fluid were leaking in the system, we'd be able to spot it fairly easily. Um, everything looks fine over here, so I'm less suspecting that this pressure problem on the pedal is from an external leak. Uh, it's looking more and more like it's an issue with the master cylinder itself. Uh, but to verify that, we're now going to go over to the master cylinder, and we're going to take a look over there, see if we can spot any leaks externally as well, um, and then we'll go ahead and make our call from that point forward. Okay, so uh, we're here on the driver's side of this E39. Uh, since we're kind of generically diagnosing the system and making it applicable to all cars, obviously gaining access to the master cylinder is going to be different depending on the car. In the case of the E39, uh, one of the cabin filter housings sits directly on top of where the master cylinder brake booster is. So we went ahead and removed that along with the duct for the HVAC, which gives us access here to our master cylinder uh, reservoir as well as the master cylinder. And again, just looking to see if we can uh, identify any type of external leakage, uh, which we can. Everything is dry, which kind of expect because, again, the pedal is firm, uh, but when the engine is running, it feels like the pedal never really has a stopping point. Like, it, it feels solid, but it never feels solid like that is as far as you can compress the system. Um, and a couple things to keep in mind, obviously, uh, being a modern car, it has a power-assisted brake system, so you have a brake booster, which uh, uses vacuum from the engine, so you have a check valve on it, and it pulls vacuum from the intake manifold. Um, it's often confusing for people when you're dealing with like a brake pedal feel issue uh if you have an issue with your master cylinder or the brake booster but the best way to think about this if the brake pedal is solid but it doesn't feel like you have any stopping power chances are the brake booster is bad or the check valve has gone bad for it uh the brake booster has an internal diaphragm and it basically exerts additional force on uh on the pedal so you get more braking force you don't have to hit the brake pedal as hard if you've ever driven a vehicle before that does not have a brake booster in it, you'll know that the pedal is very firm and, uh, you know, you have to work a lot harder to get the car to slow down. Um, that's not the case in this car. The pedal feels totally fine. It feels like the brake booster works perfectly fine. The issue is, is that with the vehicle running, you pump the brake and it gets firm when you push it down, uh, but it just feels like the pedal continually travels. It doesn't feel like it ever wants to stop. And there should be a point where you've compressed the fluid in the system enough that it would come to a stop and you can't push it any further. Um, so at this point with 166,000 miles on this car, 21 years of age, uh, no signs of any issues with the braking system externally, no fluid leaks or anything like that. Uh, chances are the issue that this car is experiencing is an issue internally to the master cylinder. So you could have a seal in there that's causing pressure to bypass which is allowing the brake pedal to travel further than what is normally expected. Um, so that is the conclusion I have to come to on this. Um, it's just one of those things where uh, when you don't have any external signs of this problem, but you know that there's a brake pedal fuel problem, it can only really be from a couple of sources. In this case, because there's no external leakage, uh, we have to make the assumption here that the master cylinder uh, is worn out and needs to be replaced. Yeah, so um, a little bit of a, a weird diagnosis just because usually when you have a serious issue with your braking system, it's a little bit more obvious. This is really just more of a, a feel situation, which is a little bit more open to interpretation. Uh, but I could definitely feel where the owner of this car doesn't like how the brake pedal feels. 
it's been bled multiple times. There's no air coming out of the system, so we know that's not a problem. And again, the brake pedal feels mostly okay, but it just feels softer past the point where you would expect it to be, uh, which ultimately leads me back to the conclusion that we have a worn master cylinder here. And uh, brake master cylinders are typically a, uh, an item that is not replaced and often misdiagnosed. Uh, we know that the brake booster is good. We know that all of the clutch hydraulics are sealed. I'm sorry, brake hydraulics are sealed. So we don't have any external leaks or anything that's super obvious like that. The brake calipers are good. Um, it, this, this is just a situation where it needs a brake master cylinder, uh, which we will do a full in-depth video specifically on this car about how to replace that. Obviously that process can be different from car to car. Uh, so we can't really talk about that in this video, but again, we're going to have a DIY on how to replace this brake master cylinder, specifically on an E39 M5, uh, that'll kind of go in conjunction with this video, but overall what we talked about today was generally how to diagnose a braking system, check all the major components, make sure you don't have a glaring, obvious problem, and um, we hope you learned something. Have you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. If you liked this video, hit the like button, and hit subscribe. We have a lot of videos on the way, and as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.